Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the call to discuss Epigrus Quarter 3 FY24 performance. I believe you had an opportunity to view the early presentation that was released earlier today. Chemical industry continue to be under pressure in Quarter 3 FY24 as well. This talking is still continued and the demand from certain industries was low in the quarter. We believe current scenario is short term and demand might revive in coming months. Long term outlook for chemical and manufacturing industry looks positive. Even in this situation, we have witnessed 18% year on year volume growth in quarter 3 FY24 and for 9 months of FY24, we have witnessed volume growth of 17%. This growth is majorly coming from the new products that we commission in FY23, like epiglarohydrin and the CPVC resin. So our continuous capex in previous years have led us to the volume growth and also catering to diversified industries and customer base. This led to be less impacted in this challenging environment. Volume growth in FY24 is coming from the projects we commission in FY23. <laughs> Similarly, this year we will commission additional capacity of CPVC resin of 45,000 tons per annum, new capacity of CPVC compound of 35,000 tons per annum, and new capacity of chlorotoluene value chain. This will drive the volume growth both in FY25 and FY26. Our focus on transitioning and the diversify our business model has borne fruit as can be seen from the revenue contribution from derivative business and in the nine months of FY24. Revenue from derivatives and the specialty segment contributed 42% versus 27% previous year for similar period. This 42% will further increase as our all future expansion plans are towards derivatives and the specialty segment. This diversification helps us to withstand against challenging business scenario like current time. This diversified expansion strategy benefit is clearly visible in quarter 3 FY24 on quarter on quarter basis where revenue is almost flat but marked increase in PAC by 29%. We are focused to do continuous expansion in high value and high growth products, strengthening our integrated complex and catering to diversify industries to bring consistent growth in the business. I now hand over to the call to Mr. Sanjay Jain, our CFO, who will take us through the financials. Thank you, Bolik. Let me take you through the financial performance of the company. We witnessed revenue of rupees 472 crore in quarter 3 FI24 against 478 crore in quarter 2 of 24, that is a flat growth for quarter on quarter basis, but decrease of 14% on year on basis. Revenue contributions, revenue contribution from derivative and specialty business achieved to 42% in 9 months FI24 against 27 in 9 months FI23. EBITDA stood at rupees 123 crore in Q3 FI24, that is growth of 14% in absolute value on quarter on quarter basis. EBITDA margin improved to 26% in quarter 3 FY24 against 23% in, in quarter 2 FY24 on account of increasing overall capacity utilization, higher volume of CVC and epiclohydrate and overall improvement in the efficiencies. That stood at rupees 49 crore in quarter 3 FY24 that is growth of 29% Q on Q basis. That margin stood at 10% in Q3 FY24 against 8% in Q2 FY24. For 9 months of FY24, we witnessed volume growth of 70% against 9 months of previous year. The volume growth is majorly from derivative and stationary segment. Overall capacity utilization of the plant stood at 81% on quarter 3 FY24 against 77% of quarter 2. For trailing 12 months, as on 31 December 2023, the return of capital employed stood at 18%. This is after considering the capital work in progress. Ignoring the same, the return of capital employed stand at 21%. A net debt stood at rupees 944 crore as on 31st December 2023 versus rupees 863 crore as on 31st March 2023. Thus, net debt increased by rupees 81 crore as company has incurred cash outflow of rupees 323 crore for capital expenditure backed by strong cash flow from operations. 
In Q3, FY24, the company has redeemed preference shares of rupees 30 crore and have outstanding as rupees 120 crore as on 31 December 2023, compared to from compared to peak of rupees 211 crore. Our net debt to Vita has stood at rupees 1. Uh, stood at 1.96 times in quarter 3 FY24 against 1.83x in quarter 2 FY24. We were able to maintain this ratio even in this challenging business environment and continuous expansion. The net debt equity of the company also stood at 0.8x in quarter 3 FY24, which was 0.85x in quarter 2 FY24. With this, we can now open the floor for questions and answers. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. If you have a question, please press star in one on your telephone keypad and wait for your turn to ask the question. If you would like to withdraw your request, you may do so by pressing star in one again. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any question, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. We will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. First question comes from Priyank Chedda from Valum Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. My question is on the uh, margins for derivative which you can share for Q3 and Q2 and also uh, what would be the rough margins uh, that derivatives would have made on nine months basis. Uh, so margin, as you would see that we have made a margin of 26% for the Q3 FY24 EBITDA margin. And uh, again, uh, current quarter and considering the nine months, uh, the floor alkali is bit on a lower side and the derivative is a bit on a higher side. That's where we are, uh, the strategy of diversifying is actually playing us and we are balancing our EBITDA margin. But again, uh, that is, is the current situation and actually we are not sharing uh, the segment-wise the EBITDA margin, even for a quarter or a nine months. Okay, so it's a, it's a uh, request since we have been diversifying our strategy from chloroncally to derivatives. Uh, and, and given the derivatives are improving on the margin trend, it would be, it would be, uh, as a good corporate practice, it would be greater, it, it would be good if we share on a total derivative basis, we're not asking for a individual chemistry. Uh, it would give us a better picture and uh, a better evaluation uh, criteria. So just a suggestion on that. Uh, yeah. Well, the second question is, second question is on epichlorohydride. If you can help us with now, we were uh, looking towards a ramping up of our utilizations. What are the current utilizations? And uh, how much are we confident to ramp this number in the FY24? So the capacity utilization for epichlorohydrine, uh, which was like last quarter in the range of 40-45%, that has gone up to around 55-60%. And again, that will improve on from the Q4 onwards. So we are in line with what we had uh, estimated in terms of ramping up of the epiglottin capacity. Got it. Uh, uh, we, we, we did see uh, the uh, see PVC compounds uh, 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 capacity which is getting added. If you can help us, uh, what are the realization spread and the industry dynamics uh, on CPVC compounds? Uh, would it be similar to kind of a CPVC designs that we are planning for? So CPVC compound, as you would say, I mean, we have announced the capacity of around 35,000 tons per annum. So as you would be knowing, the CPVC raising goes into CPVC compound, and CPVC compound will be ultimately used to make the pipes. So and when we started selling CPVC resin, we saw there is a market for the CPVC compound as well. There are customers, so that's where we entered into it. Uh, and in terms of the margins, if we put either, I mean, uh, even when we sell the CPVC compound, the margin remains in the same range. So it's not that uh, something uh, great or even on the lower side, it will be in the same range what we would have earned in the CPVC resin. So that remains intact. And market, if we talk about the CPVC uh, compound market is also growing in line with the CPVC pipe market. So that's where we see the potential for to sell this product as well. So it's a combination. We can sell the full CPVC resin and the, if the demand comes for the CPVC compound, we can sell that as well. So it's open for us what to cater to market. 
Sure. And just to clarify, Milen, on the, this CTVC resident uh, capacity is uh, is an is independent capacity which is, which is ready for mountain sales. And CTVC compounds is an over and above uh, the CTVC resident which would not be having any inter-segment inter sales, correct? No, it's a forward integration of CPVC resin. So basically, if we make, for example, if we make 75,000 tons of CPVC resin and we sell everything in the market, so then there is nothing for the CPVC compound. But if you make CPVC compound, then the resin required to make the CPVC compound will be coming from the CPVC resin. And ratio would be roughly 1 is to 1? Uh, no, it's roughly around 0 0.8. 0 0.8 is the uh, point 0.8 of resins is required to make one uh, unit of compounds, correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Got it. And just the last question before I come back on the queue. Uh, uh, you did mention that overall pricing on the derivatives has bottomed for uh, has slightly the the, the 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 reduction that we have been witnessing in the prices uh, has now reduced. Do we see uh, in overall uh, all the derivatives wherever we are present in across the chemistries, has the pricing bottomed out? What are the signs that you're looking towards uh, the, the bottoming out of the prices? Or in case if you want to highlight, are there any derivatives where you are witnessing further more pressure coming up from the China? Uh, so looking at the current energy cost of Chloroalkali, you know, we feel that this is all, all, all the derivative price is almost bottom out, you know, in, in the last quarter, in the third quarter. Now uh, we see some positive sign going forward. Market is also improving and we see the positive impact is coming from quarter four onwards. So I think, uh, you know, initially we were in the chemical, we were expecting that H2 will be better compared to you know, H2, H1 will be the worst in the chemical since, since last 15 years. And we feel that that was extended one more quarter up to quarter three, and probably from quarter four we are seeing some positive sign in terms of the recovery of the demand or started moving the inventory at least. And that's uh, that's equally uh, applicable towards uh, the floor alkali also, right? Yes, 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 definitely because if the derivatives and specialty segment will improve, definitely the major portion on customers for the chloroalkali segment in the western part of India is all chemical companies. So definitely textile has already improved as I mentioned in the, in the last couple of months. It has already improved to almost 90, 95%. It has recovered after Diwali and other segments also we are seeing it will start moving up from January. Yeah. Just a last question, uh, data entry point on what was the utilization for chloroalkali? Last quarter it was around 75%. So it is again in the range of around 70, 80% kind of thing. Got it. Thanks a lot. Welcome. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any question, please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad. I repeat, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any question, please press star and 1 on your telephone keypad. Next question comes from Bal Krishna from Axanon Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I have some broad questions, like uh, strategic questions. So basically, uh, if I look at the look at India uh, in terms of uh, PVC production, so a lot of uh, maybe fifty percent of that is uh, getting imported, and fifty percent kind of uh, is being produced in India, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. So my question is like uh, the, uh, some of the big players who are making PVC, so why why would not, uh, you know, why they are not thinking about making CPVC also? So uh, first of all, the CPVC is not uh, like a PVC kind of technology which is available openly, you know, for setting up the plant. Uh, this is one first requirement, so you need to invest, you need to find out, uh, uh, you know, you need to do some R&D also in-house in terms of engineering also, in terms of chemistry also. So it is not openly available technology for setting up a plant. This is one reason and the second reason, the PVC 
uh, and the CPVC both are completely different technology. You know, it is not something uh, something related to the PVC kind of molecule, which is uh, ready-made technology, which is available from the different sources. And the capacity which you mentioned, yes, it is right. 40% uh, of the capacity, I think, of the PVC requirement of India is produced in India. 60% is imported. The major reason is the ethylene, the petrochemical source, which is required to manufacture the PVC, uh, where uh, PVC is the last priority compared to polyethylene, uh, which is the first priority in terms of the investment because of the higher IRR and higher returns compared to the capex. So that's why all the ethylene goes majorly into the polyethylene rather than the PVC molecule in India. Because growth in every region as domestic demand is growing in every sector in India. So there is a demand growing in polyethylene also and there is a demand growing in PVC also. That's why PVC is always left behind in India and it is depend mostly on the import basis. Okay, thank you. And uh, uh, about the ECH, so uh, what is the, in terms of tons, like uh, what is the consumption in India currently? Yeah, so current consumption of ECH in India is roughly around 85,000 ton to 90,000 ton uh, by end of this year. And we are expecting in next two years' time, it will be almost, it is going to be 180,000 tons, which is almost double than what is today. Because a lot of expansion is going on in the epoxy resin side and, and the other application side also in India. And everybody has announced their plant and their, their plant is under construction for setting up epoxy resin or other applications. And we are expecting in two years down the line, it will reach to under, almost around 180,000 tons per annum capacity of hypochlorizing in India. And uh, the, there was some anti-dumping uh, duty application was filed by you for ECH. So do you have any update on that? No, that's the process. Um, um, so I don't know how much time it takes in the government. And so nobody is having any idea about that part. But, uh, uh, in terms of epichloroidine, in terms of epoxy resin, the consumption of India is growing very fast because majorly it is used in the three growing segment of uh, India where the domestic demand is growing. One is uh, automobile, second is infrastructure, and third biggest is the construction sector. So all three sectors is growing very fast. Sorry, third sector is windmill, renewable energy. So all three sectors is in the high growth path in India. And we believe the numbers, what we are mentioning right now, about 180,000 or 150,000 tons consumption of epichloride in two years down the line, will achieve uh, uh, earlier than what we are expecting. Okay. And last question. Uh, so uh, in the last conference call, I think I understood that uh, you were also exporting ECH, right? Yes. So in this regard, I have a question that uh, since we, you are the first who is producing ECH in India and uh, now you are also exporting whereas a lot of people might be importing also. So what, what is causing this like thing? Uh, is this a price or what, are the, what is the reason for this? There are multiple reasons. One is definitely the price. Another is uh, everybody would like to keep a two or three vendors, you know, in their approval list. Uh, people cannot depend on one particular vendor, so this is the major reason. Yeah, but as as as, as domestic capacity available, uh, we believe that uh, going forward, the domestic uh, preference will be on the higher side going forward because uh, it is lot of uh, logistical challenge in the current scenario uh, to import uh, in such a bulk raw material which is liquid, where the storage of the raw material is also, uh, also a challenge. So as the capacity is increasing in India, we believe that uh, domestic uh, vendors will be the first presence on the supplier side going forward. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. Next question comes from Ria Mehta from A Equitas Investments. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. I'm sorry if my questions are repeated. Uh, I just joined the queue later. Uh, my first question is in terms of caustic. Uh, so basically, what is the current realization? Uh, 
actor capacity utilization for costing current realization for the costing would be in the range of 31 32000 and the capacity utilization uh, is around uh, for the q3 is in the range of 78 80% 78 to 80 percent, and this would be majorly coming from a normal sector, or if there is any particular sector which is outgrowing others. It is well diversified. It's not specific to any right. going in a specific segment. It's well diversified. And I think last year we were seeing a lot of uh, increase in both of caustic as to your so. How are things going uh, there? Uh, like, are we still exporting, or mainly because of the geopolitical issues, the shipping has been an issue to Europe? So, what is the scene there? No, no. It's uh, right now the situation in Europe is completely reversed. It is in the worst situation, and uh, all the companies in Europe. Are, uh, so, most of their plants are running at 60-65 percent level because of the high energy cost and the downstream demand so there is no additional demand coming from the asia for the export so there is no opportunity at least in this current scenario from india or any other country to europe in which uh, are we exporting caustic right now uh no we are not exporting you know uh, we are selling to saying? eastern part of asia but to the customers uh, at the time but but not, we are not exporting right now and uh, what is the trend of the realization currently like uh, are we seeing this getting consolidated at these levels i think since i think couple of months now yeah so currently the realizations have been in this range even in the situation when the demand is bit under pressure and even in there is a supply uh, supply i mean there is a good amount of supply in the market so we believe the current uh, range which we have is kind of a bottom out and things might stay at this level or improve down the line what it at case of the raw material what is the current cost of power so in terms of the energy the prices have been you can say come down a bit but it has not gone to the level of pre covid levels so it has gone down but not to the extent of the uh, drop in the realizations of the chloralkali so that's where there is a bit of pressure on the chloralkali uh, margin you can say for a, this year so that's where it has to be i won't be able to share the exact price price of the per unit cost okay got it and in terms of yes what would be the realization currently sorry ecs realization ecs yes you are asking epic chlorohydrin or caustic soda realization epic chlorohydrin ecs so epic chlorohydrin realization has been in the range of around 1 lakh to 1 lakh 5000 oh. uh and of uh, the other player who up the ecs capacity will be coming up soon so uh, do you think there will be glut and that that will lead to lower realization See, in uh, what you said is right. The other capacities will be coming, but as earlier in the early comments, uh, Malik sir just informed the way uh, the epoxy manufacturers are increasing the capacity and the way demand is growing in India. The current demand of ECH, which is around 90,000 tons per annum, which will reach to around 1 lakh 20, maybe next year in two years time it will reach to around 1 lakh 80,000 tons per annum. So that's where any new capacities that will be coming will be absorbed. plus we are already uh, our products are well approved by the customers we have already established market for us in the europe and the us so we are in a much better position in terms of serving the customers so even if the new player comes that i guess the demand which is growing will absorb the supply that will be coming and what will be our export percentage in ech predominantly around 30 to 35% as of now 30 to 35 Okay, that's it for my side. I'm joining the queue for further questions. Thank you. Next question comes from Mohit Sharma from Prime Wealth. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, Vinay. First of all, congratulations for good set up number. And I just have three questions. What is your current ECU realization in Q3 versus Q2? Sorry, ECU realization for. 
the relation issue relation for Q3 is about 27 to 28,000 as of now. 27 to 28,000. Okay, sir. And how much do we consume chlorine in house? So currently, uh, uh, with the expansion that we did along with the expansion mm -hmm. in the chloralkali, our chlorine consumption in house is ranges in the range of 65, 70 percent. And as this year uh, we will be commissioning the uh, additional capacity of CPVC resin and the chlorotoluene. So that will further consume chlorine that will be coming from the chloralkali plant. So in a matter of two three years, we anticipate that we reach around 85 percent of chlorine consuming in house. And while consuming the chlorine, do we have the byproduct HCl or it is entirely chlorine consumption? Or Sorry, I didn't get the question. Can you repeat? Yeah, it is, it uh, is in the form of chlorine uh, and HCl both. You know, in the, some of the products being used as HCl, some of the products being used as a chlorine itself. But uh, yeah, as Melinda has mentioned, we will consume 85% of the chlorine, whatever we produce in one year down the line as our CPVC expansion and the chlorotoluene uh, will be streamlined, chlorotoluene project also will be streamlined in next six to nine months time. Okay, sir. And do we sell hydrogen also? And if we sell hydrogen, do we include the same in the calculation of ECU? Uh, the, no, hydrogen cell is additional, uh, but uh, oh. additional than the ECU. But uh, okay. hydrogen we are selling also and hydrogen we are consuming in the hydrogen peroxide also. So we have a both, uh, uh, both, uh, we are application of the hydrogen is in the both, you know, both the, as a product also as a, as a downstream product also. And how, how much we sell out of our total production if we have number available? Like 40%, so we are selling around roughly around 40,000 to 50,000 meter cube per day. Okay. That's also on my side. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. I repeat, ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. Next question comes from Subham Upadhyay from the MicroCap Minutes. Please go ahead. Yeah, hello. Good evening, everyone. And uh, I have most of my questions have been answered. So I have just one quick small question. Uh, I'm sorry if it is a repeat question. So I've been going through the investor presentation and the project update which you have given. Like two of the projects are very close to completion, like 85% and 90%. So can we expect uh, some contribution from these particular projects into the top line in this in this quarter? No, no, no. I don't think so. This is uh, so. By end of fourth quarter, it is going to be completed. So we are not expecting any of the revenue will come from the existing uh, in existing financial year. Okay, and uh, uh, another capex you have mentioned is like forty-seven crore. So will that be spent in this particular quarter itself? Yes, yes. So that is an estimate, but yes, it will be spent in this quarter. Okay, and uh, any more capex planned for uh, next financial year? Every year we have a continuous capex, so generally it will be ranging around 300 to 350 CR. One year can be here and there, but yes, definitely uh, we will be doing continuous capex for the growth. Okay, okay, thank you. I will rejoin the team. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any questions, please press star and one on your telephone keypad. We have a follow-up question from Ria Mehta from A. Equitas Investment. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity again. Uh, my question is in regard to CPVC rates. So currently, what kind of utilization levels are we at and the realization? So currently the CKVC uh, uh, no, utilization is around 85% and uh, the revenue which we are getting is roughly around um, 140 rupees kind of average, yeah. 140 rupees. And uh, we have 
expecting on my Q4 the newer capacity to come up. When would we expect the ramp up of the incremental capacity? I think that you can expect the uh, uh, optimum level we are expecting by end of uh, end of H1 next financial year. Yeah. H1 next financial year F optimum capacity will reach by that time. Yeah. H1 FI25. Right. And could you elaborate on the CPVC compound, the application, and how is it different than how is the entire chemistry? Uh, so uh, basically, CPVC resin is not what we make. So after CPVC resin, one makes CPVC compound. And then from CPVC compound, pipes and fittings can be made. So that's where we have for forward integrated into the CPC compound as well to cater to all kind of customers that are there in India. Right. So basically, we will use captive CPVC for a CPVC compound. Yeah. And so uh, for yeah, eighty percent of the customers are based on freezing, and twenty percent customers they prefer to have a compound directly. So we don't want to miss out those customers, and that's why we have set up this plan for the compounds. Yeah. Okay. So post this commissioning of the compound, how much percentage of the resin would be used for captive consumption? So that we have capacity which we have built 35 percent, but I don't. Uh, we will be utilizing I think 50 percent kind of thing by end of H1 next financial year. Yeah. Okay. It would be higher margin. Of the reason? No, yeah, no, no. It is uh, slightly higher uh, in terms of uh, margins. Uh, yeah, compared to because it, this is a value addition and one step forward integration. Yeah, it is slightly better margin than the uh, than the reason. But yeah, but it's not big difference. Yeah, because there is no much. It's a very simple process. You know, it's not not a complicated process. Oh, got it. And uh, in terms of our other uh, products like chloromethyl peroxide, uh, are we do we have seen some kind of uh, realization? Sorry, I didn't get your question. Chlor chloromethane and hydrogen peroxide. What are the realizations like and utilization level? I think last year we were almost at around 100 percent. So, so that stands even for this quarter in both chloromethane and hydrogen peroxide. And the realizations would be again in the hydrogen peroxide, uh, it is somewhere around 25, 26,000. And in terms of the CMS, it would be somewhere around uh, 30, 32,000. 32,000. Right. Uh, I think that's it from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have a follow up question from Priyank Seda from Valum Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. my question is on chlorotoluene. Uh, so, if you can uh, help us with uh, how long is the customer approval? We understand that it, go, it goes into uh, as an intermediate for pharma hydro and CEMO uh, application. So, uh, how are we uh, on the customer approval front? And if you can help us uh, uh, on the further, uh, what would be the kind of a value addition? Product that we would that we were thinking, uh, how are, where are we on that? Yeah, so uh, chlorotoluene, yeah, it is majorly going into the pharma and uh, uh, agro customers, and uh, I think we are targeting 50% of the domestic market and 50% of the export market. So domestic uh, approval will come very fast compared to the export approval. So we are expecting initial sales will generate from the domestic vendors and going forward. Uh, the, all the approval will achieve. Probably it will take six to nine months time, you know, uh, for the export customers at least to get an approval. But we will, by end of FY25, we are expecting to reach more than 60% of the capacity of the tour, including the derivatives or including the specialty product which we are going to add as a further uh, capacity. And sir, so how uh, different uh, is our chemistry? Uh, with respect to the capacity of chlorotoluene, which has been getting added by RT, Gujarat, and Italy, uh, how are we different in that? Uh, if you can help us with that. Yes, chlorotoluene is a, is a simple word where people are using for many different ways. 
but this is a completely different chemistry in first time in India uh, where this facility which we are doing it. The facility which RCS announced also the similar but I think GSCL has announced it's a completely different chlorotoluene which is uh, uh, which is uh, not in line with what we are going to do it and RT is going to do it here. So you mean that uh, given the varied application of chlorotoluene, about 15,000 ton is dedicated towards a very specific kind of uh, application where our competition is not uh, adding any capacity. Is my understanding correct? Yeah, right now I think we are the first one uh, and the same I think the same, yeah, we are the first one uh, in India and no one is adding the capacity right now at least. The GSL is not doing it. Um, RC, we don't have the status of the project. But yeah, so we are the first one right now in India uh, and nobody else has a similar chemistry from India. So uh, is this uh, product getting imported today which we will be replacing uh, the imports or uh, is it a new market that we are developing? So it is, uh, right now this product is completely imported uh, from uh, China or Japan or in Europe. Uh, nobody else is manufacturing. So a lot of custom manufacturing companies who are buying this raw material from other uh, from China, Japan and Europe. So uh, we believe that this market is going to increase in next 5 to 10 years time and the, uh, when the completely as a, as a make in India, uh, people don't need to depend on other part of the third part of the country and all the multinational who are in the agro or pharma, they also believe and they also need a complete value chain from um, and as a second option other than the China country, people need completely value entire supply chain from India. So we are going to be support this part and, and to the, all the specialty chemicals company in India. Got it. And if you can help us with how much of this product is getting imported in India as on day where we would be having 15,000 capacity uh, so that we get to know how much of the replacing as an import substitution. So this product in last five years it has a major change. Uh, it is not something very huge market. This is a, a niche kind of thing. And uh, uh, year on year, the volume is increasing because custom manufacturing companies in India, they are also increasing. And the people uh, also, they are adding their uh, molecules to Indian companies for their customer manufacturing. So volume, year on year, it is increasing of this kind of chemistry. So this is a bundle of the products where 10 to 15 products, which 10 products out of all, we are targeting only the 10 products in the first phase. And going forward, we are going to do value addition and we might add further steps in the add-on chemistry from this. But this is going to be in the future, not now. Now, right now we are focusing in the first phase where there are 10, 10 different kind of products are there out of entire chlorotaline and value chain. Yeah. So if I have to uh, if I have to get more clarity on this, the 10 products that we are uh, uh, manufacturing uh, is the exact size of kind of an import. So 15,000 tons would be getting imported for this 10 products, which we would be completely replacing it. And once this replacement is done in next say by FY25-26, we would then again go for a further value add product, which are again also getting imported. That's right. That's right. That's right. Got it. Got it. Uh, on a, on a, uh, I have another question on the long-term capital allocation thoughts. So, given that we have been uh, we have been uh, ending our very large capacity uh, capacity additions uh, in last two three years, we have almost been spending four four hundred to three fifty crores for last two three years uh, per annum. Uh, how do we think of strengthening our balance sheet further? Uh, given that we have a thousand crore kind of a debt, uh, what are our uh, debt reduction plans? Uh, if you can also help us with what would be the uh, free cash flow allocation that we would think of. See, uh, considering the uh, current debt that we have all put together is around 940 CR, uh, working capital and the long term debt. So that is a peak debt that we have. 
that debt uh, will for uh, will down the line uh, might reduce from year on because the capex that we are doing completing this year and that will again start contributing uh, cash flows from the next year so we'll be having good amount of cash flows for doing the capex in the range of 3300 350 cr and also paying a part of the debt so i'm i'm not saying the debt will go fully but debt amount uh, what we have right now is is at its peak like for example in the current uh, year itself if we look at the debt that we have our debt has been increased from 31st march to uh, 31st december it has been increased by 80 cr whereas we have spent a capex of around 323 cr so the 2250 cr of capex that amount we have spent is coming from the internal holes so that is from and again in the year which is totally down as of now so this project we commission plus the other capex that we will get commission this year that will start showing the good amount of cash flows to fund the capex also and also in terms of paying off the debt so overall our balance sheet size will increase the debt in absolute terms will remain almost similar level to meet the requirement of future cash flow of future expansion and future capex okay okay so, so what i have understood is the uh, in a in a in a in a full uh, perfect year where there is where all the capacities would get commission uh, we would have a somewhere cash flow of around 500 crores or give and take some percentage points over here uh, yeah, that's of right. this of this uh, of this what would be so so uh, we would continue with 300 350 crores of capex every year is that the understanding that we should build in it could be around 300 cr see again see we have to put the project every phase has a different out of cash flow cash flow outflow is different at different point of time but mota modi you can consider around 300 cr of capex that could happen but what you said in terms of the cash input from the cash flow from operations would be around 500 cr so after that 300 would be the capex the balance can be used to pay dividend and to uh, reduce our debt okay okay and uh, uh, how much would be the term loan uh, out of 940 and what are the repayment schedules for that uh, presently with the debt of 940 was 640 around 640 crore is a uh, long term debt and uh, what are the repayment schedules for this Uh, average maturity repayment schedule. Uh, yeah, it's around three to three and a half years as of now from this, except one loan which has been uh, recently availed. Two hundred crore every year. So yeah, so six fifty. So every year we have a repayment schedule of around one eighty uh, CR. So that's around three and a half to four years. And also just to uh, point to that. we have a redeemable preference shares in our books that also we have reduced from 150 to 120 cr okay okay uh, for it and what would be uh, roughly what the maintenance capex uh, per year maintenance you know the plant which are old assets that will be around uh, you know are kind of 2% kind of thing and and the new assets must be having around 1.5% kind of thing yeah <laughs> got it uh all right thanks for answering all the questions thank you okay thank you thank you we have a follow up question from mohit sharma from prime wealth please go ahead uh sir do we uh, you told me the if you were around 27 28000 do we include flex or uh, lie in the if you calculation it's a combination of both Okay, combination. And so, if I'm aware data available, I can see that there is a drop of around 40-45 percent in the ECU prices. So, when do you expect the market will be back to normal, or there will be some increase in the prices, or this is the new normal? Uh, see, currently the realizations are around in the range of 31, 32 thousand. And uh, again, it's difficult to give you a number than when it will go up and to what extent, but. considering the current situation we feel where we are standing in terms of the relations it is bottom out so it might improve but when again it's anyone's guess okay sir and for the our other project which consumed the chlorine we transfer at the market price or internal price let's say from mill price or something because if i'm aware correctly chlorine currently is running negative <coughs> yes so uh, chlorine that we Consume in-house in the other products. There we consider that it is a market price. 
नाटक भाई ओके सर थैंक यू थैंक यू लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन प्लीज प्रेस स्टार एंड वन ऑन योर टेलीफोन की पैड वी हैव अ फॉलो अप क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम बाल कृष्णा फ्रॉम एक्सन ऑन इन्वेस्टमेंट प्लीज गो है Thank you. Uh, uh, my question is to Malik. Uh, in some earlier conference call, uh, you have mentioned that uh, you know consumption of uh, CPVC uh, in India is kind of you know close to 50% of the global uh, consumption. That's if I did not understand. Uh, I mean, if I understood it uh, rightly. So, uh, can you tell me why, why is this like the 50% figure? I mean, there is very huge and it is consumed in India and not outside. Yeah, it is uh, true. Uh, CPVC is introduced in 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 India is in 2004, and uh, in in terms of development of the infrastructure and speed up process, it started in India. I think after almost you know China has developed and everything, India is the last leg. And uh, so every other country they have used PPR as a pipe application for the hot water pipe application. Where PPR is there, and CPVC for the hot water pipe application, it is easy to handle and easy to install. So plumbers are feeling much better in terms of handling this product and installing this product in India, and that's why it has picked up very fast in India, and that's why the volume in in terms of uh, CPVC raising it is going up drastically from. 2004 onwards, at least 10 to 12 percent minimum in a year-on-year -year basis, and that's why it has reached to 50 percent. And other countries, uh, they have uh, established their plumbing installation and other things based on the PPR. So that's the major difference why India has picked up CPVC for the hot water pipe application compared to other countries. And going forward, we believe like country like US, Korea, and And Japan and and even China for fire and sprinkler application also they use CPVC as as a resin and and that is not yet started in India till people use and approval has not yet come from the authority so in the going forward we believe that uh, the Indian authority will also change the specification for the fire and sprinkler application and the CPVC resin application will go up in. This application as well. So we are expecting by 2030, the India's volume of CPVC uh, resin will reach to almost 5 lakh tons in India. So it is, I think, it is driven by more plumber flexibility and installation. Uh, no, uh, I think they have driven the uh, the growth of CPVC resin in India. Okay, and the, uh, one last question. Uh, so uh, considering the The current financial year so far is going, uh, and the way it is going. So, uh, whatever guidance I think you have given for like in the, for the medium term, maybe 26 or 27. So, uh, are we making any changes to that guidance in terms of revenue or EBITDA or something like that? Into the next financial year. Yeah. So this, uh, yeah, the guidance which we have given, yeah, it might be uh, not exactly the same number, but it might be plus or minus 10 percent or 15 percent kind of thing from that level. Yeah, because that point of time, what kind of the product price will be? But our capex, everything is we are doing it based on that, keeping the number in target. Okay, we can achieve those numbers uh, in the next three years time. Yeah. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you. We have a follow-up question from Priyank Chadda from Valum Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity again uh, for continuing on the discussion on the capital allocation. Uh, so, uh, Malika, when we think about uh, adding further new, more new chemistries, and we have, we have been witnessing that as companies have been progressing from 75% chloralkali to now, it would go below 35% in the next one or two years. Uh, and when we say that we would be uh, that we'd be planning for 300 350 crores of capex spending, uh, what are the kind of chemistries that we should think of uh, in the derivative side going ahead 
uh, would it be the similar, would it be the existing chemistries where you think there, there is a huge scope to add or would, it, would there be a new chemistry that we, would be, that we are working on it? So, uh, yeah, so there are mix of this, you know, so we can do the existing chemistry as well as the new chemistry also we are exploring. So that's why we have started an R&D center uh, near from, in Ahmedabad. And there we are working, so first phase what we are going to establish, that everything is over in the R&D and now we are doing establishing quarter four, all the plants and all the products will be commissioned. By end of quarter four, it will be commissioned. But the new chemistry, we are started working in our R&D and that is going on. So it is new chemistry also it is there as well as the existing chemistry which we know that is also there. But what is our asset is available and what is our strength, that is our first priority. And, and we wanted to play around those chemistry. If we might need to add some more chemistry around that, we will add more chemistry. But our core focus will be the chemistry which we already have right now in the first phase. If quantify uh, in terms of what would be the minimum effort terms that we look forward if we want to venture into any other new chemistry or based on their prices at that point of time, uh, what are the kind of IR returns that we think of uh, when, we are, when we are deciding, when we are penciling down the new uh, PFX spend? Now, if you can help me on that. So based on today's scenario, if any uh, chemical companies would invest in a specialty chemical kind of multipurpose kind of plant, uh, the CapEx to turnover ratio, I think it is going to be mostly around, uh, uh, you know, around 1.4 to 1.5 maximum, yeah, based on today's scenario of the capital cost and the, all, the, all the commodity prices, yeah. Got it. And uh, in chlorotolin, uh, uh, we, 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 uh, as you said, that we're looking forward for first-end products uh, where we are doing a 15,000 ton of, uh, tons of capacity. Uh, what would be the follow-on capex in case we have to go towards value-add segment? Uh, what would be the kind of a size and capex requirement that would uh, that would be required? So in the chlorotolin on the derivative side, you know, even if you want to do a one block, it is not more than a 200 kind of crore kind of thing in one block, you know. So I, I don't think that it is much more capex or it's a big size capex is required for that kind of chemistry. And uh, the size would be similar to kind of a 15,000 ton size? So this is going to be the value addition. So, uh, yeah, you can say roughly around not 15,000 tons. This is uh, the 15,000 ton is a major block, but uh, yeah, close to around 10,000 ton kind of thing, yeah. And so uh, all the further uh, addition within chlorotolin should come at significantly better Returns, uh, return on capital, even it, it would have a far better realization and it would not be kind of a greenfield requirement. So within existing uh, facility, this should, uh, this should uh, result into better return ratios. Am I correct? So I, I would say yes, it is correct once we reach to optimum level of the plant capacity because initial time I think it is on the lower side. So, yeah, once we reach optimum site, I think it is, you are right, that we can get a better realization from this product range. And to achieve uh, in, uh, company level uh, EBITDA margins on the newer chemistries, what is the kind of a, uh, uh, utilization that we should think uh, that uh, after the minimum level, uh, what, what is that minimum threshold uh, that we would uh, achieve a company level margin uh, on the utilization front? <laughs> So utilization front generally optimum what we consider is around 75% for the plant that we have, 75 to 80 for the current uh, plants that we have. And compared to the chlorotolin kind of plant, I think it is uh, more than 60% kind of thing, I think it is, we can achieve. And uh, break even levels would be around 30, 40? Sorry? Uh, break even is achieved at 30 to 40% utilization level? I didn't get it. Break even. Again, okay, see, see uh, there is, I mean, in this, there is nothing like as such a break-even point of view. But yes, if the capacity relation is dropped below 50% or you can say 40%, then again, it depends on plant to plant. But then the margins will definitely go down 
or it will be a kind of a break even but if it is higher than that you can earn a better margin like in our case of the currently what is the situation so you can expect when when we do any project we are considering from 25% you always be kept in mind definitely depends on the market scenario or demand scenario it may differ here and there but we always keep in mind that the 25% roc we should keep when we do any kind of project yeah perfect so kind of you thanks for answering all your questions thank thank you thank you there are no further questions now i hand over the floor to management for closing comments we mean uh, i would like to convey that long term story of india remains intact and current situation is short term and looking at the indian consumer story story we are positive about long term outlook and we are working towards that through our future expansion and diversification in terms of multi product catering various industries we are targeting consistent growth both at top line and bottom line I'd like to thank you for joining us here today. Please feel free to reach our IR if there are still any unanswered questions. Thank you, everyone, for your participation. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes your conference for today. Thank you for your participation and for using Dur Sabha's conference call service. You may disconnect your lines now. Thank you, and have a good day.